Today, I'm Henry Lee at uh, Blue Heron Arts. Um, I'm going to show you the process of mounting um, two of my recent uh, um, Chinese brush painting on rice paper that I did um, uh, in my backyard and the front yard, uh, the peony and iris. Uh, they're blooming beautifully, so I got inspiration to do them. And as you can see, the rice paper are not uh, perfectly flat. So before I can uh, put it online in my online gallery, uh, I will mount it. Uh, sometimes I don't mount it because uh, uh, I let you do it yourself. Uh, as, as a painting reference, you don't have to, right, to, to frame it. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, if uh, you like, you can, you can ask me to do this uh, if it's not mounted. But sometimes I just mount it before, uh, sell it, list it. Mm. So the, the materials we're going to use are uh, backing paper, it's a, uh, a, a kind of a, uh, stiffer, but not too stiff. I, I, I still like the uh, flexibility so I can roll it. You can use heavier paper, like Bristol paper, multi multimedia paper, etc., or even watercolor paper uh, for, that, for this purpose. Uh, so I'll cut the paper roughly the same size, a little bit smaller or, or bigger is fine uh, as the original. Okay, so I'm going to divide it into two. I can do the two pieces. I just fold it. Okay. It comes with the rough side and the uh, shiny side, smooth side. Um, I usually use the rough side, but uh, my friend uh, at the mountain shop, they said the smooth side is what they use. Um, I don't really understand uh, the difference, maybe uh, uh, subtle. So uh, let's stay with that. And I need to cut the silicone paper uh, slightly smaller than the painting, or the same size as the painting. And this is the silicone paper that comes with a, a film attached to a release paper. Okay, so it has a little bit edge. I like to to be very visual, you know, I'm a visual person, so I, I just put the painting on top of this, roughly estimate the size. You can measure it, but the painting is not squareized, so it, the, you, know, you don't have to be very that precise. So, about that. And I use a roller blade. It's the best to cut silicone or any any uh, paper with a cutting board. So this, is, this is for one. It's very easy to cut uh, uh, the. I mean, the, the film may have a little loose piece. I can show you how to patch it if that happens, or some part is loose. It will not really um, matter. So, I'll show you how to 
how to um, maybe connect smaller pieces to a large one or make patches. Let's see. So if we, we, if we want to use this one, and then we, we need to just a, a small piece to, to connect two pieces together, we can do so. Uh, I just assume that I have, this, there's a broken part here, so I just cut it off. It's a patch. Maybe we can... talk to someone else. <clears throat> if you have uh, one piece that's not enough, you can you can make a, you can attach another one. You just cut a little yeah. So save all your little pieces and they can be used together. Okay, that's that's all I need. This is called the paper, paper cutting part. And when you when you mount you need to have a pad. I use four layers of denim cloth. Okay. And I put uh, the backing paper on top of this. Now it's iron. I set the iron at the lowest which is silk. The next is, uh, uh, actually synthetic is the lowest. I set it on silk. So between wool and the synthetic. Every iron is different, so you can uh, test it to find your, your best setting. It has to do with the time of, uh, you know, how fast you want to go. If you have lower temperature, obviously it will take a longer time. So uh, let's just do this, this uh, attachment okay, or combine two pieces together. That's what I, I, I try to show you. So we can do one piece on this, uh, this side and then just iron it facing down, the film side facing the top of the Backing paper. Okay, now we need another smaller piece. Because I didn't really measure it carefully. I could have done better. It should be the same height at least. But this width could be a little overlapping. Uh, could be a lot of overlapping. So we need to make sure this height is the same. Okay, this one is better. I just use the scissors, sometimes it's easier. This, uh, this paper is a little bit, okay, so it's a little bit smaller than the paintings. I have to cover the entire, uh, and cover the entire sheet. And you know, it's very common that you just miss the corner here, and that's okay. So um, let's just do this one. So I cut it in this short, right? So um, it's short of uh, like a half inch, 
That's okay, we have some extra here. I'll just take this strip and save it for this kind of uh, usage. Okay. And then I align this on top, uh, on the right side, and see the overlapping? That's how easy it is to combine two pieces of silicone. And please note that there, there might be some uh, missing film on the edge, so you need to take care of that before you make a <clears throat> so some loose you can you can put multiple pieces like this so one strip if not enough make another one because <coughs> we Okay, now this, this um, backing paper is uh, prepared with uh, silicone and I need to clean this. The reason I'm using this denim cloth uh, or um, you can use cotton sheeting instead of using a felt is because when this happens, when this uh, silicone film exposed when you iron it, it stick on the surface you need to rub it off and this is very easy to clean with um, a smooth fabric if it's uh, felt it's impossible to rub it off so it will damage it will come back to your painting you know so you need to make sure there's no uh, silicone left on the surface. And uh, after it cool down a little bit, it will peel it off. So let me prepare another one, since we're doing two. So that's a, uh, the new, something new. I show you how to combine small pieces. So don't waste any piece of silicone. Save them. Uh, you can use that as passionate. Oops, I, I think I just use a, a good, uh, a, whole piece here. Oops. Okay, so this one, I don't need to make a, a patch or combination. It's a little bit too big, but that's okay. As I said, it might stick on the table, so you can, you have to rub it off. That's, that's why I prefer to have it smaller or same size as the backing paper. Again, it's uh, set on silk, a nice iron, and then just activate the silicone film, the adhesive with uh, a simple iron. And you can start from the center out, that's uh, uh, more professional way to do that. Okay. Some, some like to do this from side to side. Okay, again, I clean up the extra adhesive. Just rub it off with the fingertips. If you cut the paper more precisely, you can prevent this, this uh, step. You, you need not to do this. I just try to sit off. Okay. Now we have got the backing paper uh, with silicone paper on top. So this is the one uh, we have multiple silicone 
pieces stuck together to fill in uh, all the to cover all this the surface. Now I'm going to lift it and notice how I lift it from from the uh, the first layer that I put on. So the the uh, uh, the patches I made overlapping patches is easily lifted. See, it come off. If you lift the other direction, it might be a problem. If I just iron it, it's still warm. Maybe, uh, yeah, when it's still warm, it's kind of sticky to work with. You see, it just pour it, pour it out like a, like a hot cheese. Okay, then just go around it. Should be seamless. Okay, now um, let's just do one at a time. So this one, you know what? I I better do this one first because I need this complete um, sheet as a protective paper. This release paper that. Uh, it's very easy to confuse, you know, which one is which. <clears throat> this one is anti-sticking, uh, so the film now is attached to the backing paper, not to the release paper. Okay, the, the, the paper that easily come off is the release paper comes with the silicone film, all right? This paper is now used as a uh, a dust preventing paper on top of the the painting when you iron again. So here is a optional step, but it's very common that we can see uh, there are soft creases. If you can have hard wrinkles. What I do is I will spray some water and iron um, on a separate uh, surface um, to prevent uh, you know, any moisture on this table, uh, tabletop to flatten it before I continue. But uh, since this is very soft, but still you can see some whoppering, some unevenness, because some color, I use this acrylic gouache, so it, it has different shrinkage the paper is not even, that's why we mount it, right? And uh, here I, I'll use some water, a water sprayer. Spray some water outside the table, okay? I lift, I, I hold the paper like this. this is, um, and then uh, I, I think I just spray on the front side, but it's a little bit, uh, it's like uh, 30 inches away or 40 inches away not too close, so you, you got an even mist. Very, very subtle. It's just, it's just like how much you, you use the, uh, the moisture for iron a shirt, so not um, to dampen it. I, I have, I've seen people asking uh, how, you know, uh, the, how, how much water to dampen the, the paper to, to pre, uh, and they worried about the color bleeding because this color I used are uh, Chinese painting colors, but some of them uh, I think it's a watercolor. So if you spray a lot of water, dampen it, it might bleed. But for this much amount, like it's, like in in the air, we only have thirty percent humidity here. I do need. Um, add some moisture today. If you ha you're in a humid climate, you, don't need, you, you, you can spread less or even uh, omit this part. I just want to have a little bit moisture so it they don't become crispy when I iron, you know. So I, I have a little um, extra margin here, so I'm going to uh, because this side has more calligraphy, usually this is this is more important to align first. And then I will just cut off the extra margin on the right. So it's time 
you can kind of crop it a little bit because the paper is uh, the back paper is smaller. Now I put this on. I let the moisture a little bit uh, do this thing and you know, relax the painting a little bit. Um, and then I put this this release paper without the silicone back on the top. Okay. On the bottom is the backing paper with silicone film. In the middle is the painting facing up, not facing down, okay? And then um, protecting sheets. This time I start from the center, up and down, left and right. And then corners, four corners, from center to the, to the corners. Okay, here's a note. You need to go all the way outside the, the paper. Don't stop at the edge because the iron is not perfectly square. You know, you, you cannot really stroke within the, the, the paper. You need to go all the way, all the way beyond the paper to make sure that all the edges are fully heated, heated, okay. Because if there's moisture, uh, depends on how dampened it is, how, how moisturized, how much oil you, it may take longer or shorter. If it's dry, you, you don't use any water. For small pieces, I always do that. You don't need to iron too much, too long. Okay, and you can lift the, the front page to see how it looks like. If you see minor wrinkles, this is very common because I, as I said, because the, the paper has different uh, uh, shrinkage, it, it's very likely uh, to happen. So what, what I do is I, I lift the painting, okay, it got, I forgot to clean. I think I did. But it's okay. It will not stick on there. See, this kind of edge is very annoying sometimes. And you have to back it up because it could become active again. <laughs> okay. See, some minor wrinkles like this, it could be reduced. Um, I don't really care if there's still like hair thing wrinkles. Um, it's part of the texture of this kind of painting. But if you're a perfectionist, you can do this. Just spray some more water in the area with sprinkles. And uh, iron again in the direction of uh, uh, perpendicular perpendicular to the wrinkle. So the wrinkle goes this way, you, you pull up and down, or just go circular, like sometimes I, I cannot really. Yeah, it's very easy to, you can suppress it. If it, if it that doesn't come up, just minimize. But I think it, it does. So. As long well as you have some moisture, it, it, it will help to um, flatten. I got the major one down here, but I don't care. This one here, I can do this. Because the wrinkle goes this way, so I go this way, and that's all I need. I don't think you can even see it from the video. Okay. There is a there is a, a major one here. So let me spray some more water. Let me show you. Yeah, see this one, this is very common. Uh, depends on, you know, your painting. 
you could you could reduce this by iron uh, the painting first. Uh, but I want to show you how to deal with this after you have mounted. So if you if you are worried about this happening, uh, if you can see can predict this is going to happen, you would I would um, iron the painting with the water first, but not to iron completely like a very uh, hot, just to relax it, yeah, just to, and then you have to uh, spray a little bit moisture back again, just to help. Oops, so this is also common, if you got stick, you have some, some, some uh, glue on the, on the, this paper is become unusable. You, you, you better throw it away because when you keep using it, you may go back to the painting. And I try to rub it off when it's still hot. It's okay, it's minor. I create some kind of a horizon here. <laughs> you don't really notice that, I think. Not too bad. And this is the corner, it's clean. So watch out on this kind of uh, things. Uh, with your experience, you would, uh, admit, you know, you learn by mistake, error, and learn. Uh, you'll become better and better. It's a craft, not a science. Even you know everything, you still have to practice. So you, I was, I uh, uh, suggest you practice with your uh, practicing paper, uh, painting before you do your exhibition ones. Okay. And here is the the one uh, I have the pigment. Uh, let me let me show you how I would uh, proceed this time. I I. Because I see some major wrinkles here on the painting already before I paint it. You know, so I'm going to iron it first. Another thing um, I try to prevent is the, the seal. And see, the seal it takes a very long time, up to 30 years to dry. Is that even, you know, if you rub it with the tissue, it will come out. Uh, sometimes it was it was uh, have a stem on the on the, on the paper, and then you you need to be aware of that. It can it could go back on the painting somewhere, it could stand the painting. So in this case, I was I will put the seal later after I mount it. So let's see. I will use a piece of paper on top of this, a clean one. Without the silicone, I use it as a. You can use parchment paper; it's the best. Um, the the back back uh, bakery paper, parchment paper, is the best for this uh, protecting purpose. You know, iron on top of the. The painting. Okay. It's a very large crease here. And I'm making another mistake I'm, I'm aware of because I'm ironing 
um, on, on the same class that I'm going to do the dry mounting. This is a very common mistake. Uh, if you are not aware of this, what happens is next the step when you put the silicone taper on top of this and then do the ironing, <laughs> the moisture coming from the back side will make the back the backing paper wrinkle. Will so I better iron this area to make it sure it's dry. Usually when you lift the the cloth, you will see moisture on, on top of the uh, table. So that's not, uh, not good. So this area should be as dry as possible. This, this uh, working surface should be very dry. And I can use cotton setting maybe just to dry it. This class has been used for over a decade, at least. It's a good investment if you buy a piece of uh, Danny McCurls class from, uh, um, from fabric stores, like Joanne Fabric. They should have, that's where we got, and you can use for a long time. Okay. So uh, we need to spray the, the painting again before we dry mount it. So first first step I, I was doing is just to um, iron the painting itself. Because when I paint it, there's a wrinkle, so you can even see it if, even if the paper is, is flat because the bumps created while you paint. But that's okay. It's, for me, it's all adds uh, some uniqueness to the painting. So the, the next I'm going to put uh, the painting on top of the prepared backing paper. This time it's a little bit smaller, that's okay. Sometimes you can see the extra, the extra films standing out. And what I do is I can use the scissors to cut to to cut it off. If you don't do this, it will stick on the on the backing on the I mean on the padding. Or you can you can fold it back to fold it back to the inside. It will be fine. Just kind of. If you're really getting um, a perfect one, you, it's like surgical work. Everything has to be pre precise. Okay. Okay, don't forget to turn the, the temperature lower. Because sometimes I forgot, if it's too hot, it, it, it fix the painting too soon before it gets chance to flat. So I would start with, like even turn it off, you know, if it's too hot, you can turn it off, just use the remaining temperature to start with. And then you can turn back on. Okay, cover the painting with a cream protecting sheet, you can use uh, bakery paper or parchment paper. Because the painting has been flattened first, it's relatively uh, easier. You can just guide it on top of it, don't have to stroke that much with much force. 
just simply activate the silicon film. Okay, see what happens. Uh, although I tried not to uh, not have you know, the moisture on the table, the steam comes back. I think it kind of creates some wrinkles. Uh, but don't worry, you can you can uh, keep iron just to moisturize the painting. Oh, I see what happens. The temperature is too low. It just didn't iron enough. That's a, a, another very common phenomenon because people are very, very timid, very worried. They, they use very, very low or even uh, warm. So when this happens, it usually means the temperature is not enough. Yeah. Actually, there's not much wrinkle on the back. I could have same kind of... Uh, so each uh, case is very um, sophisticated to analyze, analyze what cause. The solution is simple. You just to keep iron with some water. So I made a lot of mistakes on purpose to, to share with you what happens. Um, so if you do it on your own, you could prevent it from happening, hopefully. If that if it does happen, how to fix it? I painted some thick hands. I think I feel the the this thick hands here. <clears throat> yeah, see the the wrinkles are gone. Just to you can add more moisture if you need it. The advantage of dry mounting uh, is time, if more time efficient. Um, I can do it uh, during the painting process, even before the painting gets dry, and keep working on it. Uh, you can mount um, the painting with a uh, half, you know, half done, uh, and then enhance it. It's very common. And the reason I don't mount it first is because sometimes you can trace the, temp the template or you can do it from the back side. After you mount it, you, cannot, you don't have those options and the tracing becomes more impossible. Especially with the uh, Gombe painting, yeah. Okay. Do I need to iron on the back? Usually I don't. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Even, you know, there's some unevenness or some doesn't really bother me. If sometimes I, when I do this, the front become a problem. Yeah, so I just look at the front, not to both sides. So this, this one I started with the multiple Multiple silicone, I, I patched it with small pieces, five, uh, four of them. To, to, so it doesn't really uh, make any difference in that regard. Uh, finally, I'd like to show you uh, how to seal it. I mean, <laughs> you, you know how to do this, but uh, I just want to 
I'm gonna share with you how I do it. <coughs> okay, um, need a heavy weight. Okay, we have a little tool called the L-shaped ruler that you can get from our store. Uh, this is to align the, the seal, the one of the, the corner, so you can uh, place it easily. And if you make any mistake, before you lift the ruler, you can go back enhance it if it's not enough okay so and then you align with this corner oh i didn't check the orientation <laughs> don't make that mistake my signature is usually on the left side so, oh that's correct so yeah i i just checked my signature that's that's all okay Well, that's the complete uh, work ready to frame. I put this on our online uh, gallery so you can collect them if you like. Thank you for watching. Thanks, thanks for subscribe our channel on YouTube so you'll get a uh, notice whenever we have uh, something to share live with you see you next time have a good uh, easter weekend bye bye now